Good evening, my YouTube family. So, it's back in the kitchen again after an exciting day that hubby, my hillbilly bee man, had me do today. I'm in my comfort zone. <laughs> so, it is another pantry challenge night, and I will say the goals to my meals are to use as many natural products as we can. We all know that groceries are getting quite expensive these days, and the more specialty we invest in, it's getting harder. So I try to keep my meals as basic and normal as possible, yet safe for my hubby. So that's the reason why you're seeing revised versions. I try not to use as much specialty foods because I'm there right with you folks. To order some of this stuff online is... Uh, it's getting crazy so I am using as much natural as possible but there are some times I will have to use alternatives and tonight will be one but it's one readily available at Walmart and so it's not going to be totally out of the way tonight's meal is um, just a good old wholesome um, meatloaf we are making some zucchini fritters out of the shredded zucchini that I had in the freezer. And we are having home canned French style green beans. So all this from our pantries, our freezer, and it's all wholesome food. So let's get at it. I have about a pound and a half of ground hamburger. I am going to be adding some onions and bell peppers. Now, this is not an actual recipe. You guys take this, write this down if you choose to, and use your preferences on your likes and how much you want. I will not be using a binder in mine. And so at this point, with knowing that, most binders that have been typically used in a meatloaf is breadcrumbs, or they used bread that's been soaked. I will not be using a binder. If you choose to, there is an option you can do, and that would be using pork skins. Or another option if you wanted to, that's totally up to you. You could use almond flour if you wanted to. Not saying I would, but the safest best would probably be the pork skins. However, again, I'm not using a binder. I think it holds quite well without one. And if it falls apart a little bit, honestly, I don't worry about it. So totally up to you on that. So, and I like veggies in mine, so I'm going to add more. I am going to be adding some Dijon mustard to mine. Naturally, it's from my home canned. You can use store-bought if you want to. So, I'm going to add about two teaspoons for the flavor. I'm actually going to try something new. If you remember that tomato, the sun-dried tomato mix that I made... I'm going to add some for a kick of flavor. It's got a beautiful garlicky scent. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to add a little bit of the sun-dried tomato in this as well. Not a whole lot of it, but just enough for somewhat flavor. And hubby, he likes putting ketchup on top of his anyways. So, which you will see me doing that. That man can be strange sometimes. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt. I'm using Himalayan sea salt. Some cracked black pepper. Again, please go by your preferences on these. I'm just basically giving you ideas. I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon of basil. Eh, a teaspoon of basil. And a half a teaspoon of thyme. And a half a teaspoon of oregano. Sorry about that. 
I am going to use a full teaspoon of garlic powder. Again, this is from my own stash, homemade. And a tablespoon of parsley. Using my eggs, I'm going to be adding two whole eggs to this. Let me get this out of the way. Small kitchen, small space. Now, I'm not adding Worcestershire or nothing like that. Actually, I may. Yeah, I'm going to add just a touch of Worcestershire in mine. And other than that, you all add whatever you add to your meatloaf. This is pretty much really safe ingredient. So, I'm going to use two farm fresh eggs. And I'm going to add just a splash of Worcestershire to this. Okay. And that's it. Now I'm going to mix this up really good. I like using my hands to mix this because I can blend it up better. And I'm just going to dig in here and mix this all up really well. And again, with the All-American Meatloaf, you can add whatever ingredients you want to it. It doesn't have to be complicated. And it's anything versatile. Anybody can make this, whether you have health issues or not. So... This is some things we do have to watch, and it's perfectly fine if we make a meatloaf without a binder. I like to keep our groceries as minimal as possible with these prices, so hence the reason why I'm keeping my ingredients easily without all the extra expense of those specialty foods we can't really order I'm getting to the point I can't even order it online myself it's just wow so at this point I'm gonna take my pan over here take out my ingredients in my bowl after mixing it up make sure I get this mixed up really really well I don't normally use this grade of hamburger, but it was on sale. Hubby got it, and I'm just going to use it up. And once I get the pan out of the oven, I can drain off all the grease. So, And that's probably what I'll do. Now, I'll take it out of here and then put it in this pan. Just a bread loaf. These things don't want to stay on my hand. I'm not really used to wearing gloves either. Alright, now I'll just press it in there nice and even. Make sure there's no bubbles in here so it gets pressed down. Bubbles keep it more firm, especially when you don't have fillers. And I just want to make sure no bubbles are in here. There we go. Pressing that down. It'll stay binded better this way. Sometimes you just don't need fillers. Go around my pan. See what this looks like. Yeah, and there we go. All right, so let me get this mess cleaned up, and I'll be right with you. Okay, so now I'm going to clean off these 
edges of my pan really good because I don't want this dripping anywhere. So I got my oven set for 350 degrees so it's preheated and ready to go. Now here comes the crazy part because my husband actually likes this. Some people will put barbecue sauce. He actually likes um, ketchup. However, I am using the no sugar based ketchup. You can use whatever preference you like. I'm going to take a pastry brush, brush this on here, just like so, and we're ready to go. Quick, simple, throw it together, throw it in a pan, and let's put it in the oven. Now we'll get this in the oven. And we will cook it until it's cooked all the way through so in the meantime I am at this point going to finish my farm work I need to go water my chickens again and take care of a few other things I shall be back and we will start the zucchini fritters that's going to be interesting so I shall be back with you okay we got the farm work done and now I can get back to cooking so I'm going to start with getting my green beans prepared so they can cook for a little bit. Again, like, uh, as most of you know, I like to take all my canned goods and basically uh, I'll boil these for like 10 minutes. It's just a safety thing that I've got a habit of and I kind of don't want to break what I have done. So I'll get these in here. And I got two more jars. Lord and mercy, jars are getting expensive. So now we'll get the second one. For the two of us, this kind of makes like three meals. So hubby's got that third one for lunch. All right, now come on out of there. They want to be clingy. All right. Get this on there. Get it started to cook. And we are going to now start our zucchini fritters. Now, you can do this two ways. I had already stated that my fritters, uh, I've had two small bags. I, over the summer, grated my zucchini already, and I put about a cup per bag. So, I've got two cups of shredded zucchini in here, and then I have some finely diced onions, about, about a tablespoon to two tablespoons at the most. I prefer to have a shallot, but I don't have any, so I'm using what I've got. So, oh, and in that meatloaf, I did forget to tell you that the vegetables that I used was um, about a quarter cup each, or well, a quarter cup of chopped onions and three mini bell peppers that I chopped. So that was what went in the meatloaf. Okay, so... If you use fresh zucchini, and you absolutely could, you do want to strain it for the liquid, and you need two medium zucchinis for that. And then, again, about whatever your preference for onions, you can leave it out if you wanted to as well. So, I am now going to be adding a third cup of almond flour. Now, this is that one ingredient I said it's a specialty, but it's something available at the store. So, we're going to use this. We're using a third cup of almond flour because we can't use regular flour. So, and this is a fritter. You can use coconut flour if you wanted to. Um, I need three fourths cup of mozzarella shredded cheese and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I am using instead of mozzarella, 
I am going to be using uh, Applewood smoked Gruyere. So when in mozzarella, that's just a general idea. You can choose if you want pepper jack, whatever. It's a flavoring. So use whatever preference cheese you like. I'm using three quarter cup Gruyere and a quarter cup of shredded parm. Now I'm gonna use onion powder and garlic powder. I need a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And I believe recipes will give you ideas. You don't have to be exactly precise on everything. Seasoning is one of them, so go by your preference. One teaspoon of garlic powder. I am definitely going to have to fill this thing back up this year for next winter. I definitely went through it. But I have to say, I, I did pretty well through this pantry challenge. This has lasted us about a year, so I'm proud of that. And the moment I open it, it's so garlicky. I will definitely do this again. And my onion powder actually smells like, oh, what do you call that? Um, caramelized onions. It smells so good. I am going to add a little more to this recipe. And I'm going to kick it with a teaspoon of parsley. And then you just want salt and pepper to taste. So, with this little bit, I'm probably only going to go a half a teaspoon of sea salt and some pepper. You can add some red parsley or, or pepper flakes to this too if you wanted. I'm going to leave that alone. So now I'm going to add two eggs. I got my hand heated, my pan, Lord it be, my pan heating up. So I'm also going to start adding my, you can use olive oil, you can use avocado oil. I'm actually wanting that kind of nutty butter flavor to this. I think it would taste awesome. So I am going to use homemade ghee. And we're going to mix this all together really well until everything is incorporated in it. Then we're going to fry up some fritters. One of my favorite things I used to really love, I kind of grew up with it, was uh, potato latkes, otherwise known as potato pancakes. It's actually a German dish, and I loved that so much. If I can find an alternative for that potato, I thought about a turnip, but it just, turnips would not have that flavor. So I may try cauliflower mash to see if I can't make my favorite latkes again. But until then, it's going to be zucchini fritters, or to me, it's like a zucchini latke. So... And that's all we do. So now, make sure our pan is pretty hot. And it seems pretty hot enough. Oops, sorry about that. I had to get my pot holder. I'm going to turn this down. It's quite hot. I don't want to burn them. So I'm just going to take, for me, an ice cream scoop. Not fill it maxed or nothing. Just kind of get a nice dollop in here. Put them in my pan. Things don't want to 
going to work right for me today. Flatten these out a bit now if they get some stability. I'm actually hoping that my pan don't stick. I may end up having to re-season this thing. Now I will tell you this smells pretty good. I'm learning to find new ways of incorporating zucchini. Um, if I do freeze it again, I would freeze it for this. I would freeze it for zucchini bread. I would have to find a recipe that I can accommodate for hubby, but that would probably be the only way I would freeze zucchini. As far as sauteing, I won't ever do that again. So, I'm gonna check. Golden brown on one side. You can flip it. smell really really nice I think I can handle this one we'll get our plate check on our meatloaf kind of get the full round today y'all Meatloaf's doing pretty good By the time hubby gets home he'll have a nice warm meal again another one now this yesterday was super quick and easy today a little bit more wholesome meal and I tend to do that it depends on how I'm feeling and again as I go through my freezer definitely learning I think I'm gonna do half and half I've got two actually so my small one will probably be used this year for this winter for my prepared meals and my big one will be for like meals I'm doing right now think on the day when I wake up in the morning and I think what I want pull my meal out of my freezer so I am looking at maybe doing some pre prepared because sometimes I don't feel like cooking so I'll and that happens to everybody when you get so busy in your day and Lord this summer that's when I get busy the most so it got me thinking I still am making plans and some things I'm changing based by the rates that I'm seeing and in some ways I'm getting nervous we are good for about on this challenge and I told you I'm gonna call this a pantry challenge until the end of end of the term now for most people they're doing it all of January and all of February we started again a week before Christmas and we've been going strong ever since so far we went shopping one time and that was to get some of the things we ran out of and we couldn't do for ourselves but it, and that one meat which ooh, i shouldn't have done that but i did and that's one thing i don't want to do anymore so i am not going to beat myself up but but we may be able to last at least till April and that's when it bothers me because while I do go and get to get out uh, when we do we look around and the two of us got sticker shock like crazy because we haven't been to the grocery store basically like that for well since Christmas and I couldn't believe what I saw so it's got me concerned about what's gonna happen when our challenge is over and if we're going to be able to do this again for this winter, because we rely on this, it's not just a challenge. I'm just, through this challenge, I am showing you by what we do naturally. I'm showing you how to, 
use the food you have and try to minimize as much specialties as possible and create wholesome meals that are healthy all the way around, a roundabout balance. So this is what I'm trying to do. And these look good, y'all. Let me see if I can bring this to you. Show you what these fritters look like. Let me put that there, right here. Nice golden brown. It's got a good thickness, beautiful fritter. This will work, absolutely will work. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these fritters, wait till the meatloaf is finished, get these beans cooking, and at that point, it'll be uh, the next time you see me is the final for the final plating. So we shall be right back. And we are back. So here is our finished meal. We have over here our zucchini fritters. Our French cut green beans and I wanted you all to see this meatloaf this thing is a solid piece you don't always need fillers if I can get this to come up here just one whole piece just like that so and it doesn't easily fall apart so fillers aren't always necessary I avoid it since I learned this and so this is our meal for the homestead tonight I hope you enjoyed this I will put the fritter recipe in the description box below. And until next time, much love from Parton's Heritage Homestead. Hope you enjoyed supping with us tonight.